learning in the previous classes we have discussed different types of four systems so when the forces are acting in the same plane we call it as coplanar force system and in the coplanar force system we have different categories the first one we already discussed concurrent concurrent forces so if the all the forces have the line of action meeting at one point then that system of forces is called concurrent forces and we have learned how to find out the resultant of concurrent force system then we have introduced the term moment of a force force into arm of force that is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the point about which the moment is taken f into d the moment of the force we have introduced the variance theorem variance theorem is moment of a single force about a point in its plane is equal to sum of the moments of its components about the same point and based on this variance theorem we have several applications for this those applications we will be discussing in the coming sessions so of the four system concurrent four system we have already studied now second one is parallel forces so today we are going to deal with the parallel forces so forces are whose lines of action the lines of action of the forces are parallel to each other they are called parallel forces they act in the same plane so parallel coplanar forces if the lines of action of the forces is parallel to each other and the directions are same both are acting upward here so we will call them as like parallel forces and the lines of actions are parallel to each other but the directions of forces are opposite if one is upward the other one is downward such force system is called unlike unlike parallel forces so today's class we are going to deal with both like and unlike parallel forces how to find out the resultant of such force systems etc so for first deal with like parallel forces suppose there are two forces like this on a body say two forces say 10 newton and 10 newton are acting like this what about the resultant of these two forces we have studied resultant is find out as sigma fh or fx some of the sum horizontal forces sigma fi some of the vertical forces then resultant is equal to square root of fx square plus fi square here there are only vertical forces there will not be any sigma fh or fx zero sigma fy will be 10 plus 10 20 then resultant is equal to root of fx square plus fy square so 0 square plus 20 square root resultant is 20 or otherwise nothing but algebraic sum of the two vertical forces is the resultant force consider this unlike forces suppose on a system there is a force 10 newton acting like this and here also 10 newton equal values 10 newton upwards and 10 newton downwards what about the resultant here the resultant force is equal to one is upward 10 the other is downward it is zero so there is no resultant vertical force or horizontal force on the system but there will be a moment or these two forces which are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction that will have a tendency to rotate this arm of force the arm of force will be rotated if this is up this is down see a force acting upward direction here it is acting downward direction so it will tend to rotate this body in the clockwise direction so here when there are unlike parallel forces the two forces are of same magnitude but opposite in direction then that will produce a moment or it is called the couple moment of the couple we introduce a term couple to equal 
parallel forces opposite in direction the resultant force will be zero but that introduces a moment or couple whose magnitude suppose for generalizing say two forces f unlike parallel forces are separated by a distance d then the moment of the couple m is equal to one of the forces f into the arm of force so moment of the couple is equal to numerical value it is calculated as one of the forces into the perpendicular distance between the two or arm of the force so this is the general themes which we come across in parallel forces when the two like parallel forces the directions are similar unlike parallel forces the directions are opposite to each other and parallel to each other of this if the unlike parallel forces the numerical value of the two forces happens to be the same then there will not be any resultant force but it introduces a moment or a couple it is called a couple it introduces a moment in the system now the nature of the moment there can be two different nature you have we have discussed earlier clockwise moment and anti clockwise moment let us see what is a clockwise couple and an anti clockwise couple there are two forces unlike parallel forces of same magnitude this is acting up this is acting down so if you consider this this will produce or this will rotate the arm of couple this is called arm this is the arm of couple the perpendicular distance it will rotate this arm in a clockwise direction so we will call it as a clockwise couple you can remember it if left up and right down this will produce this will tend to rotate it in a clockwise direction then the just negative opposite to this the right left side forces down and the right side forces up this will tend to rotate this body this comes down and with respect to this point it rotates anti clockwise similarly this is up this tends to rotate anti clockwise so here also the moment is f into d moment of the couple and we call it as an anti clockwise couple so you can remember remember one thing unlike parallel forces of same magnitude left up right down left up right down clockwise couple you remember one so the just the reverse is the other one so we can define what is a couple what is the moment of a couple and what is the nature of the couple now we'll have some simple numerical examples based on this so we'll come to the solution of a numerical example on parallel forces the figure shows a system of parallel forces 10 kilo newton 20 kilo newton 20 kilo newton and 10 kilo newton at different distances from this end a the question is find the resultant of this parallel forces term so when you find the resultant here we have to find out the magnitude of the resultant the direction of the resultant and the third one is the position of the resultant so we are going to find out one magnitude of the resultant two direction and three position or location say position of r let it be say we'll give it as x so this is our a let us see so here all the forces are vertical forces so looking into the figure we can write down the first step the first step of resultant finding out is for sigma fx or sigma fh the horizontal direction there are no forces so fx is equal to zero now sigma fy sum of the forces in the vertical direction the sign convention which we have adopted is upward forces positive so 10 it's minus 10 plus 20 Minus twenty, minus ten, so it works out to minus twenty. That means the sigma f y is minus twenty. Means it is acting the 
number 20 kilo newton sigma fy then resultant r is equal to root of sigma fx square plus sigma fy square will give it root of 0 square plus minus 20 the whole square so it is 20 kilo newton even otherwise we can see if there are only vertical forces algebraic sum of the vertical forces will be the resultant force and the resultant force is 20 kilo newton okay now the inclination of the resultant next is inclination of the resultant tan theta we have learned earlier sigma fy by sigma fx here sigma fy is minus 20 or 20 divided by 0 so get the angle 0 therefore theta is equal to 90 degree that means the resultant force this is a resultant which is inclined at 90 degrees in the negative x direction. So the first two steps are over. We have found out the resultant. It is 20 kilo newton downwards. And the angle theta is equal to 90 degree. Now what is the third one? To locate the position of the resultant. So to locate the position. So now here we are going to use the variance theorem. Consider the point A. Moment of all these forces about A will be equal to moment of the resultant about this point A. So the variance theorem is moment of a single force or will convert it as resultant. Moment of the resultant about any point is equal to sum of the moments of the forces about the same point. So Taking moment of all these forces about A, I'll write it here, sigma MA, that is moment of all the forces about A is equal to, consider this point A, this 20 kilo newton, 20 kilo newton is acting upward. So 20, for this particular force, the moment is 0, because 10 into 0. The, there is no perpendicular distance for that force. The force is acting at A. So there will not be any moment. The second force 20. Put your thumb in this direction. Rotate it with respect to A. So the thumb comes in. And you walk, place the pen like this. The tip of the pen in the direction of the load. Rotate this about A. So this comes in. Anti-clockwise direction. So minus force into the perpendicular distance for anti-clockwise. This 20, this is the direction of the force. Rotate it about A. So place the thumb like this. Rotate it about A. So it goes in clockwise direction. So plus 20 into, what about the distance? It is 6 plus 4, 10. Considering this 10, it's also acting downward. So place your thumb like this. Rotate it with respect to A. It goes clockwise. So plus 10 into 7, 13 plus 4, 17. It sums up to 290 kilo newton meter. Since it is positive, it means the moment is clockwise. So sum of the moments of the individual forces about this point A is 290 kilo newton meter clockwise. So the resultant should be such a manner that the resultant should also produce a moment 290 kilo newton meter clockwise with respect to this point A. So moment of the resultant moment of R about A. I don't know where is its location. I assume that say the resultant is acting somewhere here. This is the direction of resultant. 90 degrees with horizontal. This is the resultant. Let me assume. Say it is at a distance x. Let us assume that. 
the resultant is acting at a distance x from a. So that the moment of the resultant about a will be equal to r into x. Since r is acting downward, moment of this about a will be clockwise. This is the direction. It will rotate clockwise. So r into x. Now equate. Equate r into x is equal to sigma ma. Moment of the resultant about point a is equal to sum of the moments of all the forces about the point a. So I can equate r is equal to 20. 20 into x is equal to 290. Therefore x is equal to 14.5 meter from a. So now we have located the magnitude, direction as well as the location of the resultant. The last step is you have to show it in the diagram. So we draw a diagram like this. The beam, I mean the structure with the given loads, mark R is equal to the obtained value, R is equal to 20 kilo newton. And this distance x is equal to the answer which I have got is 14.5 meter. So this is the answer. The resultant of the force system is can. Twenty kilonewton, fourteen point five meter, and this angle that is ninety degree. So we can represent it. I'll show it once again. We draw this line. This is R. This is point A. From here it is fourteen point five meter, making an angle of ninety degrees with. Negative direction, or if you want, you can show it. Then the magnitude is 20 kilonewton. So, this is how you have to represent the answer. The resultant. So, this complete force system which is given in the question is equivalent to a single force of 20 kilonewton acting downwards at a distance of 14.5 meter bar from A. So, we can replace the entire forces into a single force that is called the resultant. Next, I will uh, deal with, we have to discuss the how to replace a single force into component of a couple plus a vertical force. We have studied earlier the principle of transmissibility. The direction of force, if it is known, the line of action of the force is known. The point of application of the force can be changed. Anywhere along the line of action. But if you want to change, for example, if you want to change a force, this 10 kN from here to some other point, you cannot directly change it. That will have effect on this and their force system. So what we are going to see in the next video is how to replace a single force acting at a particular point to another point with the help of the application of the term coupled.